All right, welcome to the third and final lecture of this first short but sweet module introducing us to fluids. This is about fluid properties, and it's a doozy, so buckle up. All right, so first, this is important. In this class, we will use only SI units. So if my other engineering faculty might disagree with me on this decision, but I put my foot down. Uh, so SI units are kilograms and meters and Kelvin. So no feet or slugs or foot pounds in this class. Thank you very much. All right. So just remember that if you encounter anything ever in Imperial units, just convert it. It will make your life easier. So before we talk about units, we got to talk about why they are important. And that is because of dimensional homogeneity. So when you write an equation, I will write Bernoulli's equation because you're going to learn to love this equation halfway through this semester. So when you write an equation, and if you are adding terms together, in engineering, we can't just, in science in general, you can't just add anything, right? What you need to add needs to be dimensionally homogeneous. In other words, you can only add terms with the same units. So let's break these down. Pressure has units of pascals. I'm assuming you learned these in thermal, so I'm, I'm gonna review them in a minute, but just <clears throat> I think you in theory should know what I'm doing right now. Anyway, so pascals is a force, newtons per unit area, meters squared. We can rewrite this as the definition of what a unit is, or a mass, kilograms, times an acceleration, which is a meter per second squared. So that was a Newton. We're rewriting then meter squared like this. And that then is equal to a kilogram per meter second squared. That is a Pascal, right? So that was this term. Now we're going to add it to this, which means the units of density times velocity squared need to be the same. So let's look at that. That's density, which is a mass per unit volume, kilograms per meter squared, cubed, sorry, times meter squared per second squared. That's not too hard. Meter squared cancels with meters cubed to leave one meter and we have kilograms per meter second squared, which is the same. Same story with rho g z. We're gonna have density again, mass per unit volume, kilogram per meter cubed, times gravity g, which is the gravitational constant of acceleration. Remember acceleration is distance traveled by second squared. And then z is a height or a length, so meters. You see you get uh, the same idea as here, and that boils down to kilograms per meter second squared. So they are all the same as they should be. If they weren't the same, then you know something is wrong. So please, whenever you are adding anything, check the units. That is a great way to check your work. Okay, so that's just an important um, thing to note when we talk about units. Now, in the SI system, um, we'll talk about them here in a minute, but we have a few different um, dimensions or uh, units we can look at, things like pressure and temperature and velocity, right? But sometimes those units aren't... Uh, scaled correctly for the problem we're looking at. So a Pascal is actually fairly small. 
just like a joule, a unit of energy is fairly small as well. About how it takes one joule of energy is how much energy it takes to lift an orange about three feet off the ground. But if we're talking about the power produced by a hydroelectric dam, they're just not in the same ball field. So we need ways to multiply or reduce our units. Um, so that's what we're going to do with prefixes in the SI system. And here I'm providing you a convenient list of what prefixes do. So the prefix mega means multiply your unit by 10 to the sixth. Kilo is 10 to the third. Centa as in centimeter is 10 to the negative two. Milla as in millimeter is 10 to the negative third. We also have micrometers, sometimes abbreviated as microns, and nanometers, 10 to the negative ninth. And so again, you just affix this to the front. So you can say a megagram is equal to one million grams because it is grams times 10 to the sixth. Just like a kilogram, the prefix K is equal to 1,000 grams. So that's how we use prefixes to write units a little bit easier. That way, if you say that weighs 5 million grams, it might be easier just to say that weighs 5 milligrams. Okay, I'm sure you know this, but always good to review. All right, so that's kind of our preamble. Let's get into it. Let's talk about the common properties of fluids. Okay, the first one, probably one of the most important is pressure. Now you've learned about pressure before. You know that it is the force per unit area. You know that it has the unit of PA, a Pascal, where that is a force divided by an area. And the units of force in SI units are Newtons. Area is meter squared. And that is a Pascal, a Newton per meter squared. OK, now pressure is important. Um, because we often, let's say we have a flow of fluid. So here's our two plates, our famous infinite plates again. And we've got fluid going between these plates. Uh, we can often, we're often going to kind of take out a little control volume of fluid. And we're going to kind of look at it, zoom in on it. And almost always in a flow, we're going to have pressure from the fluid around it pushing on there. The pressure of the top, say P right, and P bottom, and P left. And we can use this to calculate a force balance on a little packet of fluid. Um, and we'll find that shear stress is really important in fluid dynamics because remember shear causes fluids to deform continuously and a part of that will be um, a part of calculating shear will be in knowing the pressure also there's something really interesting about pressure i like to talk about here which is that pressure is actually stored energy You say, what? Let me prove it to you. Okay, the unit of a Pascal we just talked about is a Newton per meter squared, right? So I'm just gonna multiply the top and bottom of that equation by a meter. So we get Newton meters divided by meters cubed. Whoa, what was that? So a Newton meter divided by meter cubed. What is a Newton meter, right? Well, you remember that work or energy, which have the same units, is equal to a force applied over a distance, F dx. 
it's going to have units of newtons and a distance meters, newton meters. So we've got joules per meters cubed. Pressure is energy joules per unit volume. That's pretty cool, right? Um, what that does, and you'll see this uh, especially when we look at external flows in our aerospace portion of this class, but pressure really is the potential to create flow. It is stored energy that is just waiting to be turned into kinetic energy or flowing fluid. Okay, and so you'll find that pressure is a similar or analogous to voltage in a circuit, right? You need, you need voltage to drive a current. You need pressure to drive a fluid with a given flow rate. In fact, fluids and electricity make for great examples of each other. I will probably often refer back to electricity to help you understand fluid concepts and vice versa if I'm teaching circuits. Okay, and so an important point in why we care about pressure is that a pressure gradient is often the thing that is driving our flow. So our pressure is being converted into kinetic energy um, as we have maybe some friction between the fluid itself or the fluid in the walls. The, and we lose kinetic energy, but we must continue moving. That extra energy that was lost to friction must come from somewhere. That is from the stored energy and pressure. Okay, so pressure is really cool. But since I'm a heat transfer guy, I'll tell you, it's not nearly as cool as temperature. But in this class, temperature will play second fiddle. So temperature, just like pressure, is actually the potential to create heat flow. So you say, wait, I thought temperature was the internal energy of the fluid. And I say, no, it is related to, but not proportional to. Proportional internal energy. If temperature was internal energy, which you probably called you in thermo, then we wouldn't need a separate thing for internal energy. They are different concepts. Okay, so our unit for temperature, as you know, is Celsius. Um, that is um, a relative scale. We also can work in the absolute temperature scale using Kelvin, where a Kelvin temperature unit is equal to Celsius plus 273. So if it's 20 degrees Celsius outside, then it is 293 degree Kelvin outside. Those would be equivalent. Okay, so in fluids, you can use either one, Celsius or Kelvin. I don't really care, but just make sure your units always match. You can't use one or the other one. You have to use one. Okay, another important unit in fluids is density, where density is simply mass divided by volume. So it's going to have units of kilograms per meters cubed. Unlike a lot of other um, basic units, we haven't given density its own unit. We just call it kilograms per meters cubed, which I think is interesting. So in thermo, you worked a lot with specific volume, which I call nu. I'm not sure what you used as the symbol for it, but that was meters cubed per kilogram. So you see those are just inverses of each other. 
specific volume, nu, is just the inverse of density. We're going to use density in this class. Okay, now a cool thing is that liquids especially we're going to approximate as incompressible. This means that the density of our fluid, specifically our liquid, does not change with pressure. Now, a gas, this is not true. A gas, if you compress it, its pressure goes up. That's what makes them really cool. A liquid, if you compress it, well, you can't. <laughs> uh, you can increase the pressure, but the volume will remain the same. A liquid is incompressible. Another very much related unit is the specific weight, which we'll call lambda. And that's just equal to the density times the gravitational constant, which means it has units of newtons per meter cubed. Um, specific weight is especially useful for statics problems. So next week we'll use specific weight, which is why I'm introducing it now. Okay, another density related fluids measurement is the specific gravity, which I hate, but I'm teaching you because some people still use it. So specific gravity, which we'll call SG, is equal to the density of any liquid divided by the density of water. That's for a liquid. Likewise, the density of any gas is equal to the density of, sorry, the specific gravity of any gas is equal to the density of the gas divided by the density of air at 20 degrees Celsius. Okay, uh, just to write this out a little bit more explicitly, the specific gravity is just the density of whatever liquid you're stating the specific gravity of divided by 1,000 kilograms per meters cubed. So the specific gravity of water would be 1. The specific gravity of mercury would be 13. A cool thing is that specific gravity is dimensionless, right? Kilograms per meters cubed divided by kilograms per meters cubed gives you no dimension. But aside from that, there's no purpose. Um, people will say it helps you remember densities. They say, oh, well, you remember the specific gravity of mercury is 13. And I say, well, then that just means its density is 13,000 kilograms per meters cubed. So overall, I say boo to specific gravity. There's a thumbs down, maybe. I don't know what that is. We're moving on. Okay.